Our next speaker is none other than our current premier, the Honorable Andrew Foy. Please welcome the Honorable Premier to the world. Well, it's indeed a pleasure to be here, and as usual, I greet everyone in, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Today, I recognize the protocol already established, and I want to say to QC Paul Dennis that usually when I speak, um, my wife is in the crowd and she puts up a finger when she thinks I'm going too long <laughs> as a cue. But I'm delighted to know that tonight you have told me that if I speak too long or any of us, especially myself, a lot of pretty ladies are going to come <laughs> and carry us away. <laughs> so please forgive me if I test that out. <laughs> but given that everything is on social media, I'll tell my wife it was just a joke. And I do send apologies for her tonight as she had to go to other function to represent me. So she sends her apologies and her congratulations. And I want to say that I, I, although in my effort to be brief, I do apologize because I myself have to leave after a while to a other function. Um, being that last night was a premier's party and I was out from six and this happened to be my fourth function from the day. But I have one more to go. So while I, when I leave, I want to let you know, uh, QC Dennis, that you're free at any political jokes. Because <laughs> somehow knowing him, I know he's gonna put in one. <laughs> but just for the sake of my ministers and my cabinet, um, I'll tell one lawyer joke, you know, and then I'll get to the speech because, you know, there was this gang of thieves and they were out robbing, and I'm sure you probably would have heard it about this one, and they went into a party, they robbed the party, and those guys came out with $2,000. And then they would pass by another party and they robbed the party and they came out with $4,000. But when they went in, there was a party of lawyers and they went in there. But the lawyers were so strong, they beat them up. And when they came out, they came out wounded. So when they went home, the other thieves went to the head thief. He said, he said that last crowd was tough, it was lawyers. He said, yes. He said, but, um, you know, we still come out with $300. He said, yes, but we went with 7000 <laughs> On that note, that is one of the jokes that fall under not true. <laughs> but I put that in to fill the gap for in case you see Dennis uh, picks on the politicians while I'm gone. Now oh, please forgive me as I proceed. Today is quite fitting to be celebrating the 10 years. December 15th. The day that is uh, would have been the birthday of the late Honorable Ralph T. O'Neill. Can we stand and get a moment of silence and remember this man? Amen. You can sit, my soul rest in peace. It was 2009 when it was established, but it was a long journey quite a long journey. And I remember it in 2009 when it was established under Honorable R.T. O'Neill, who was the premier at the time. I know because I was a young minister then also, and I remember all that had to be done. And I remember uh, Brother, Hugh Rollins, uh, Brother Rollins, I was, we were speaking about just now in terms of Honorable Sir Hugh Rollins, like it was yesterday. I always had fond memories of him as a young politician because he was uh, dedicated along with a lot of others, but I remember him pre uh, precisely because he had a, a unique mannerism about him and about how he goes about his job and he was very serious about it. So I was glad to know that he sent some remarks um, to the congratulations. And I remember that when it started in terms of memory lane, it um, started all the way down at one time down by Prospect Reef. And I remember it was down by Prospect Reef. But it is quite ironic, too, that this year we're celebrating 25 years, and, and, and QZ Hunt would know, would appreciate this, of the International Business Companies Act. Uh, because now that, as, as rightfully 
Justice Pereira said, said, Chief Justice, that when uh, that act passed, that initiated the whole thing. And out of that, the commercial code after a while was brought and had to come on its own and grow up and be an adult and leave home from in the civil code. And then it became an entity unto itself. And then after that, uh, meeting Prospect Reef and swimming with the dolphins, it had to find a home. <laughs> <laughs> and then came the other administration in terms of uh, uh, Dr. The Honorable D. Orlando Smith, who purchased the building by, um, by uh, Banco Popular and then put the money in it to fix it up. I know all in all, uh, given the whole gamut of the time, uh, it took about a good 14 years uh, just about to, to come to fruition. And I know it because I never thought I would see this day because I, was, I happened to be in politics now for 20 years consecutively. So I saw um, the, the, this baby grow and grow and grow. And now to be here celebrating 10 years of, of it now, is remarkable, and I want you to give all those who are, invo who are involved and still involved with it a round of applause. <laughs> I realize that we didn't know what we have. Usually people are more critical of things, what is next to them, and praise things that is far from them because that's just how human beings are. People who live in BVI say it's only BVI, no, that's how Humans be, human beings are that when you read the Bible, they were the same with Christ until he left. But what I realize is that we realize what kind of gift we had through all my Maria when the court had to move to St. Lucia. I'm sure if it was up to St. Lucia, they would have made sure that it never returned. <laughs> because they get to realize very quickly what it is that the BVI had. But we also get to also recognize that we really have something special and fought had to get it back here and get the place fixed. So all my Maria rarely expound for us that we have something special and we have to take care of it. So I'm also seeing in terms of a derivative of it where the commercial court was able to become an adult out of the civil court and, and now doing great things, uh, bringing in great revenue. And uh, we will also make sure that we get as much revenue as we can get out of it. <laughs> well, we can. <laughs> I believe you all will understand that when you go to sleep. And when, when I look at that and you see this, I'm very really impressed. I also remember there was a sister island coordinator working hard on this project. Never thought that he would be on this side of the fence and he was working with the DG office and the Premier's office, which was the then Mr. Vincent Whitley, who is now the Honorable Vincent Whitley, working hard to make this project come to fruition as a public officer who was involved. So I know today also has to be a very special day for Mr. Whitley. Oh, yeah. I also want to say that we recognize that there are other areas although we're talking about the commercial code, that are now adults that need to come out, and we're working on them. We have agreed to uh, finally design and start to build a house of justice uh, starting next year. <laughs> we uh, sat, and one of the areas that, that I did was a CDB loan, which is where it was coming out for, is to agree with the governor and I uh, repurposed the loan so that we can spend $4.5 million this year out of the loan funding so that it cannot go. For us, the design was just to, to repair the magistrate court, but that can't work. So now um, you know, we're going to take more money than what was allocated. So now we're working on a land swap to put as in, as in Henley over there and put the building over on the other side, so working closely with the Governor and the DG on this matter, but our government is handling the development. So I want you to know that better days are coming. And we also have the full design that's going to be done. But the first segment is going to be to build the magistrate court this year. And we will be uh, building it. It is going to be designed in such a way that we can build peace and peace and peace every year 
uh, so the start a section of it every year, but it will be fully designed um, this year. This is great because with this now, it is long overdue. I know that also this has started the talks of this from 1994. When the um, R.T. O'Neill Central Administration Complex was built, the westernmost parking lot was supposed to be for the halls of justice. And you know today it's still the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> so what we are saying, us, um, Orma and Maria has helped us to become better and not bitter. But for the commercial code, I want to say that congratulations to everyone that makes this, this code work. It is something great. There's a domino effect having this commercial code here more than any other um, area. It is the one area that all the sectors of the economy is touched, from the taxi driver to the hotel operators to the different vendors to the restaurants, you name it. This commercial code has touched a lot of lives and has changed the lives for a lot of persons economically. So it's not only what happened inside the code that is significant to the BVI, but it's also what happens outside of the code by all those who use it and who come to our shows to use it. So I want to celebrate each person and ask you to continue to move from strength to strength. And we have this celebration so serious uh, that you were able to get 6 8 of the sitting government to be here tonight. Apologies for <laughs> two of them. As a matter of fact, the entire cabinet is here. So uh, you see, Dennis, if there's anything that you need <laughs> passing, um, you can please bring it to cabinet now. <laughs> and we'll so do. But I want to thank everyone and thank the Chief Justice and all that work with you for all the hard work and continue to come from our government to do whatever we can to make sure not only the building and the structures, but also to make sure all the other incidentals that are involved are in place. Uh, together, we'll always achieve more. And again, congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Premier Foy, for those remarks. And I have to warn you, careful what you ask for. <laughs> and as regards your preempting my politician jokes, well, lawyers are seldom, if ever, speechless. But all I can say after that is, touche. <laughs> <laughs>